So when all around is noisy and busy, help us in this moment, Lord, to be still with you. When our minds are chaotic and full of wondering, help us in this moment to be sure of you. When our souls are troubled, help us in this moment to be calmed by you. Still, calm and sure, we come to worship you. Amen. Amen. So the collect for today, which is on the sheet, we say that together. Oh. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin. How much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not be made known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than any many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to earth, and have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Thank you. Thank you. So, this is Becky, as we've already said, and she's on tour from North Bristol area today. And uh, so, Becky, would you like to just describe your current role 
Okay. Um, so I am chaplain at Ordeno School, um, which means that I go in as an employee of Churches Together in Porter's Head, and I meet with the students in the school, and I hope to bring a spiritual presence into a secular place. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And how, how, how are you qualified for that? What, how, you know, uh, what, what kind of background have you got? Okay. It's not a, it's not a, a bad qualification. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad job interview. Um, so I have been, I worked out, I've been a youth worker in some form for the last 20 years. Um, so I've always been passionate about young people um, working alongside them. So I've worked um, voluntarily. Um, with churches um, alongside what was my sort of regular job um, and then I've worked with churches, I've been chaplain um, at Young Offenders, um, I chaplain at another school in Winterbourne and I also have a ministry in the pubs in my village as well. So I'm passionate about chaplaincy. Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit more about chaplaincy then, what, why is chaplaincy itself important? Okay. Um, the reason I think chaplaincy is so important is that I think that from generations before there would have been a certain amount taken for granted that people would have been brought up or had interactions with the church in some way. Maybe your grandparents would have taken you or your school was integrated with the church in some way or you were part of a club that meant you went to church on a Sunday. So you had access to the church in some regard. Whereas we've got a generation now where that just isn't the case, that they have no interaction, for a lot of them, um, with the church. And therefore, coming to church can seem like a really overwhelming hurdle really to get over. Coming into a building that can often look quite intimidating. A lot of people have said to me they don't even know if they'd be allowed to go. Um, am I good enough to be able to go to church? Yeah. Um, whereas the thing about chaplaincy is we're going to where people are. We're meeting them in environments where they already feel comfortable, where they already feel like they can be themselves, and we're taking the love of God to them, which is what I believe that Jesus did. You know, He went out to where the people were and he met them where they were. Thank you. That makes sense. And, <laughs> and we had a, a question earlier about um, about what young young people are facing today. Yeah. And so I'm sure you have you had some thoughts on the, on that as well. Yeah. I mean, with all the sort of the breadth of young people I've worked with. So like I said, I've worked with young people in young offenders, and the category that I go into is the youngest. So it's 11 to 14, 15 is probably the eldest. Um, and then I'd say the more upper middle class kids in Porter's Head, and then the spectrum in between that. Um, the one thing that I think affects young people the most, that then all the other stuff flows out of, is um, feeling loved, wanting to feel loved, wanting to feel known, um, wanting to feel understood, um, and so any other issues seem to arise from that core of having that lack somewhere. And so, especially in, for example, the young offenders where things have really got to the worst consequence of that, it really does still stem all the way back to some sort of lack of love, not feeling known, not feeling cared about. So that's, again, where I think chaplaincy um, really is important because you're giving them space, giving people a space wherever you are to really talk to you about what it is that's on their heart, who they are, what they're about, what matters to them, and really listen, really hear them, and let them, for that time, really feel known and understood. Um, and, yeah, giving them an opportunity to talk about what's on their heart, because I think young people a lot are told a lot do this, you need to be here at this time, you need to be home by this time, you need to make sure you're studying, you need to make sure you're doing this, 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 and this. Why aren't you doing what I told you? Um, but there isn't necessarily a lot of, tell me what you're doing, what's bothering you at the moment. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, and so looking at the passage, we have that phrase about you are more valued than <coughs> yeah. sparrows and that sort of... And he knows the number of hairs on their head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so Gordeno is not a church school, um, okay. it's a community school, 
Um, so are you able to use God in any way in, in what you do? What's it like? Yeah, so um, when you're a, a chaplain um, in a secular setting, there's a sort of a delicate balance of wanting to share faith, but doing so in a way where it's not aggressive or um, inappropriate. So um, what I do mostly at the school is one-to-ones, and I spend time with the students, um, and I talk to them and I listen to them about whatever it is they've got going on, and um, I guess earn the right really to speak into their lives. Um, and then once they're a bit known, that's when I would say, well, as you know, I work for the church, I'm a Christian, I believe this, this and this about you. You know, so I have a real privilege of telling some young people who are clearly broken and hurting, I believe in a God who loves you and loves you exactly how you are. Even if you didn't change in any way, he loves you fully right now. Um, but then I also um, run a prayer group for teachers, so, and I run um, a Christian union for students, um, I'm trying to think what else I do. Yeah. Well, more more <laughs> yeah. Assemblies, yeah, I do assemblies. And we've done, um, I've done talks or things on, on, on various topics. Yeah. Brilliant. And uh, one of our questions earlier was also about uh, what you're expecting or where you're expecting God to act next week. Have you got any particular youngsters where you're hoping for a breakthrough and next week? Um, no pressure, it's really honestly, I think when I read that question, I actually have quite high expectations of God. And I think years ago, somebody said to me about praying really specific prayers, because then when God answers, you see really clear answers. So, for example, this is, it always, you know how some certain stories just stick, stick with you. Friends of mine can tell me this, said that they prayed for a dining room table, they're like, we need a dining room table. And... Somebody gave them a dining room table, somebody that they hadn't spoken to about it, you know? And so they'll always know that that's a really clear answer to prayer because it was so specific. Whereas sometimes I feel like I pray so vaguely that then when God answers me, I don't even notice. Um, so, you know, I, when I go into anywhere um, that I work, I have a high expectation that God is going to move and that God is going to do something. Um, and so um, I have specific young people who are finishing, just finished their GCSEs, and it was real touch and go a year ago whether they'd even finished school, and um, so that, but I'm, I had real expectation that actually they, they would do it, and they and they've just finished, and that's been really exciting. Um, but I also have, yeah, because I know all their faces, you know, I just can see them. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I have real expectation of what I see God's going to do in their lives because my prayer as well always is to see people how God sees them. So if you start looking at people how God sees them, then you can start to see what He really wants for them and start expecting that. Lovely. And obviously you're giving out a lot. So where do you get your refreshment from? Apart from cake, it's not cake. <laughs> <laughs> Heavily tea and cake. Um, so I am quite a social person, so I like to have people talk to me and listen to me really as much as I like to do it to others. I sort of receive in the same way I give. Um, but also um, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a very sort of curious person, so I do, I just noticed I was behind the curtains earlier. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, my Bible study is really important to me. Um, you know, one of the things I was asked most when I first started doing chaplaincy and going out to see people, because I was often the first Christian they'd ever met in real life, like a zoo animal, um, they'd say to me, well, have you read the entire Bible? And I thought, well, probably have, really. But I couldn't honestly hand in my heart say I'd read every single word. So I also then, because I'm, you know, the contrary, I decided that I was going to make it a thing to read the entire Bible. So I try and read the entire Bible every year. Um, so then when people say, well, have you read the entire Bible? I say, actually, is that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, my Bible is really important. Um, and I love to praise and worship. So I have that on in my car. I have that in my kitchen when I'm cooking. Um, yeah. And if... In specific, if there's one thing that we can pray for you during the next week, what would be that prayer? Um, 
My, I guess my prayer always really is because I am so busy. I have three children as well, um, and I've got all these little bits of jobs, you know, that come together. Um, is that there's lots of things I could be doing, but my prayer is always that God would show me what He wants me to be doing. There's always a lot to be done. You know, the, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the work is a few. Um, so, you know, the, there's, there's stuff to be done everywhere. But I want to be where God wants me to be. So that is always my prayer, that, that God would highlight the students he wants me to speak to, the places he wants me to go. And sometimes if stuff isn't on my list for the day, my to-do list, so to be able to drop that if something else comes that actually is what God wants me to do. Brilliant. Well, Becky works Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so if you are going to pray for her, make sure it's on Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. that God Don't might have the other place. place. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much for, for giving up your time to come and see us Thank you for having uh, me. this morning. I'm hoping you found that was mm -hmm. an interesting <laughs> situation.